Welcome. It's too bad we couldn't be together on the bus this year for our tour of some of the sites on Prince Edward Island that are of significance to Ellen Montgomery. But, thanks to Bernadetta Maluski, we can see them through photographs and video footage. Bernadetta and I worked together to present the virtual tour as closely as possible to actually being on the bus. There will be narration as well as captions on the video to remind you of what we are seeing. Our route from UPEI will be west on Highway 2 to Hunter River, Bright River in the Ann books. Then we'll go to Hazel Grove, Kensington, north to Park Corner, east to French River, Spring Brook, New London, Stanley Bridge, which was Carmody in the Ann books, and finally to Cavendish, Avonlea in the Ann books. We will then return to UPEI via New Glasgow. There are a few sites that we can show on our virtual tour that we cannot see on the actual tour. The original Cape Tryon Lighthouse that was the model for Captain Jim's lighthouse in Anne's House of Dreams. It is now a private residence. Cape Tryon as it looks today with its modern electrified lighthouse built in the 1960s. We can also view some highlights in Avonlea Village a recreation of an 1800s village that includes the Long River Church that Montgomery worshipped in near Park Corner and the Belmont School in which she taught for a year. Other sites we can show here include the Biddeford Manse where she boarded while teaching in the Biddeford School, the Laura Bedeck School where she taught and the Laird House where she boarded and met Herman Laird, the love of her life. I will be commenting on some of the sites along our route that pertain to Ella Montgomery. The first thing is the campus of the University of Prince Edward Island. Attendees to the Ella Montgomery International Symposium often see just a few of the buildings, such as the dorms, the dining hall, Robertson Library, and McDougall Hall, where the presentations are held. But the campus is much larger and worth a look. The campus is a combination of 19th century buildings that surround the main quad and much newer buildings, athletic facilities, and so forth. Montgomery did not attend college here. She attended Prince of Wales College, which was in downtown Charlottetown. Prince of Wales College merged with St. Dunstan's University in 1969 to become un the University of Prince Edward Island. Leaving the outskirts of Charlottetown, we travel on Highway 2 west toward Kensington, about 48 kilometers or 30 miles. This highway is a main thoroughfare across the island and largely follows the railroad that used to stretch across the entire island. Now the original railroad bed is known as the Confederation Trail and is used for biking and walking. Montgomery would have taken the train often and she had many of her characters take it. Anne Shirley traveled this route when she first arrived in PEI from Nova Scotia. She left from the depot in Charlottetown and traveled to Bright River, which was actually Hunter River, a journey of about 22 kilometers or 15 miles. The Bright River Depot was on the left side of the highway near the main intersection. The building was moved years ago from Hunter River to Marco Polo Land, a large campground in Cavendish and it is still there today, having once been used as a gift shop and now as a residence. Along the way, we will see early summer wildflowers such as lupins, wild roses, and buttercups. We'll see dairy farms and fields planted with potatoes, grain, canola, and hay. You may also catch a glimpse of a few heritage roads those are unpaved dirt roads 
red dirt roads cut in the early years of PEI's settlement and still used today. A few miles from Hunter River, we will pass through Hazel Grove, one of the re few remaining stone houses, such as the one Miss Lavender Lewis and Anne of Avonlea lived in, will be on the left side of the highway. This house was built in 1851 for the Bagnell family and has been restored in recent years. The stone is island red sandstone. Many sandstone blocks from some of the stone houses that have been torn down can be found all over the island used as steps, garden walls, monuments, and foundations of newer houses. Kensington. In Kensington, we will make a brief stop at the train station. It was built in 1905, replacing the two-story frame structure. That early station was moved up the hill about a block away and is now a residence. Montgomery would have been familiar with both stations and departed from them to go to Belmont, Biddeford, St. Eleanor's, and Summerside. We depart Kensington headed north for Park Corner, the home of many of Montgomery's relatives. As we drive over the crest of one of the Irishtown hills, we will see our first view of the Gulf of St. Lawrence, a sight that thrilled Montgomery as she approached the North Shore from Kensington. Park Corner In Park Corner, we will stop first at Silver Bush, known as the Anne of Green Gables Museum today. This property has been in the Campbell family since the late 1700s and has been a museum dedicated to Ella Montgomery for many years. It was the setting for Montgomery's Pat books, Pat of Silver Bush and Mistress Pat. This was the home of Montgomery's Campbell cousins, Stella and Frederica, who were among her dearest friends. Today the museum is owned by George Campbell and tours are supervised by his sister Pamela. The house, with its original furnishings, is full of Montgomery memorabilia, including the blue chest from the Story Girl and the bookcase with glass doors that inspired the one in Anne of Green Gables in which Anne's imaginary friend Katie Maurice lived. The front parlor was the setting for Montgomery's wedding to Ewan MacDonald, July 5, 1911. You are free to view the rooms downstairs and upstairs, read the placards, study the dozens of photographs. Even the old screw in the wall that Montgomery mentions in her journals is still there. Montgomery's crazy quilt that she worked on as a teenager is on display as well as items recovered from the blue chest as described in the Story Girl.
A Walk on the Whispering Lane from the Pat Books is a reminder of Montgomery's Lover's Lane in Cavendish, which we will visit later. There is also the possibility of a carriage ride around the property with Matthew driving the horse. As we leave Silverbush, we will cross the Lake of Shining Waters. There was once a wooden bridge on pilings instead of this modern causeway. The very bridge that Anne had to cling to until she was rescued by Gilbert. Now, you may be wondering why it is in Park Corner rather than Cavendish, known in the Anne and Gables books as Avonlea. Montgomery wrote that this was indeed the lake she had in mind, and as an author, she could rearrange the geography to suit her purposes. On the left side of the road is the home of Montgomery's beloved grandfather, Donald Montgomery. This house is considered the inspiration for Ingleside in the later Anne books. It was built about 1879 and replaced a smaller home that was right beside it. That earlier home was where Montgomery's father, Hugh John, was born, along with his sisters and brothers. Grandfather Montgomery was one of the island's first senators, appointed by Sir John A. Macdonald when the island joined Confederation in 1873, and he served until he died in 1893. Today, the home is a beautiful inn, owned by one of Montgomery's cousins, Paul Montgomery. It was a museum before that, from 1993 to 2015, where visitors could see the Rosebud tea set from Anne of Green Gables, the China dog Magog with green spots from Anne of the Island, and other artifacts used by the Montgomery family. Ellen Montgomery stayed here many times when visiting Park Corner. At the top of the hill is a turnoff for the Cape Road that runs close to Cape Tryon, the site of Captain Jim's lighthouse in Anne's House of Dreams and later Anne books, including Rilla of Ingleside. We cannot visit it because the road is not suitable for traffic, especially large buses. This road also leads to the western shore of New London Harbor, four winds in the Anne books. That sand shore was the location of Anne's House of Dreams as well as Jane of Lantern Hill. I hope you can visit these sites on your own someday. French River and Spring Brook Next, we will pass through French River, the inspiration for Glen St. Mary and the Anne books. It is a major harbor for fishing boats and is much photographed because of its colorful and beautiful setting. As we drive through Spring Brook, you will see a little church on the right. It is known as the Getty Memorial Church built in 1836 and named for one of PEI's early ministers, the Reverend John Getty. Its graveyard is the final resting place for many Montgomerys and Campbells, including Frederica Campbell, Montgomery's dearest friend and cousin, who died in the Spanish flu epidemic in 1919. We will skirt the shores of New London Harbor, Four Winds Harbor in the Anne books, on the left as we make our way to New London. We will now make a stop at Ellen Montgomery's birthplace in New London, known in Montgomery's day as Clifton. In the tiny parlor, you will see a replica of Montgomery's wedding dress and veil. The original is too fragile to display and is held in the Confederation Center in Charlottetown. There are some of Montgomery's scrapbooks on display in the dining room.
Upstairs is the bedroom where Montgomery was born on November 30, 1874. Incidentally, the parking lot next door is the site where Hugh John Montgomery's store once stood. From New London and the birthplace, we will head to Stanley Bridge, known as Carmody, in the Anne books. Montgomery's future husband, Ewan MacDonald, boarded here when Montgomery lived in Cavendish, and her cousin, Frederica Campbell, taught school here. Approaching Cavendish, you may be surprised, even shocked, to see the many shops, campgrounds, restaurants, golf courses, and other establishments along the way. This is due to the beaches being such a draw for summer visitors. It is one of the finest beaches in the world. The water is surprisingly warm for being this far north, this due to the Gulf Stream bringing warm waters from the southern Atlantic. Montgomery enjoyed the beach and occasionally bathed in the ocean. The sand dunes to the west and the red cliffs to the east were an inspiring sight to her. She could also see the Cape Tryon light from here, which intrigued her, giving her a glimpse, she said, of fairylands forlorn. On the right, you will see a recreated version of Avonlea called Avonlea Village. The developers brought houses, schools, and churches from various locations on PEI, including the one-room school from Belmont, where Montgomery taught in 1896-97. And the Long River Church near Park Corner that Montgomery attended when she visited that area. Green Gables, the centerpiece of the National Park, is our next stop. You will be able to browse in the new visitor center, which has some wonderful displays featuring the life of Ella Montgomery, as well as material about Anne of Green Gables. Green Gables itself was enlarged over the years. It began with the one-story kitchen wing in about 1830. Later, the main wing with parlor and bedrooms was added. 
Finally, the roof of the kitchen was raised to accommodate the hired man's room. You will want to visit the house itself and see the parlor with its horsehair sofa and chairs. sitting room where Anne studied her lessons while Matthew nodded over the farmer's advocate. Matthew's room The large kitchen, complete with a Waterloo stove. And two pantries. Notice the cellar door in the floor of the first pantry. Upstairs are five bedrooms, Anne's room, the spare room, Marilla's room, and the west gable room. All are in the main wing. All are furnished as described in Anne of Green Gables. Over the kitchen is the hired man's room, not part of the house when Anne lived here. It was added later, about 1917. Descending the back staircase, you will come to the utility porch on the back of the house and exit from there. To the left, you will notice a small triangular structure that many visitors ask about. It is the well cover for the deepest well in Avonlea. This covering kept leaves and animals from getting into the well, and it also served as cool storage for milk, butter, eggs, and cheese.
There are two trails you might want to experience. The haunted wood can be reached from the front lawn and down the hill to the brook. Lover's Lane, Montgomery's favorite place to walk and think when she lived in Cavendish, begins at the back of the house. Our next stop will be the site of Ella Montgomery's Cavendish home, where Montgomery lived with her maternal grandparents after her mother died. On the way, we will see the Cavendish Cemetery on the right. Ellen Montgomery, her mother, grandparents, husband, Ewan MacDonald, and other relatives are buried here. Across the road is the new L. M. Montgomery Park, with this lovely bronze statue of the author depicted at the age when she wrote Anne of Green Gables. The large yellow house just north of the intersection was the model for Rachel Lynn's house and is now an inn. It was moved from its original location across the road to its present site some years ago. The church Montgomery attended is on the right, just before the turn into the lane that leads to the McNeil homestead. The present Cavendish Post Office is a duplicate of the McNeil home. Outgoing mail is stamped Green Gables, a small museum with post office furnishings and equipment from the 1800s is open to visitors. In the McNeil Homestead Bookstore, you will hear an introduction to the property, see artifacts from the shipwrecked Marco Polo, which Montgomery wrote about in her teen years, see some of her letters and other memorabilia. Next to the bookstore is the kitchen wing of the McNeil home that was recently moved back to the property after many years as Father Francis Bolger's writing studio in Stanley Bridge. This was the Cavendish Post Office in Montgomery's day and the room in which Montgomery wrote much of Anne of Green Gables and other books, plus many stories and poems. A walk down the path leads to the site of the original McNeil home. 
Although the house is no longer here, the remarkable stone foundation and cellar give us an idea of how early PEI homes were built. It is a lovely, quiet spot, and at least one of the old apple trees from the time Montgomery lived here is still standing. Many trees on the property were blown down last fall when Hurricane Dorian mercilessly battered the north shore of PEI. Placards have been placed at various points with quotations from Montgomery's journals that tell of her love for this home. The old red lane leading over to the haunted wood and Green Gables is still here. After leaving the McNeil homestead, our tour group would have enjoyed dinner at a restaurant in Cavendish, and then we would depart for our trip back to UPEI, going south to New Glasgow and then east toward Charlottetown. There are many other sites that Montgomery knew and loved scattered all over Prince Edward Island. And you can spend some happy hours discovering them through her journals and books, then finding them on a future visit. Heidi Herring has created an interactive map of PEI on which she points out a number of these sites. It can be found on the L.M. Montgomery Institute webpage. Thank you for going along on this virtual tour of L.M. Montgomery sites on PEI. I hope you can visit them in person soon. If you have questions about some of the sites, you may contact me at clsc123 at gmail.com. Many, many thanks to Bernadetta Maluski for providing most of the photographs and video footage for this virtual tour and for putting the virtual tour together so beautifully. As you might imagine, she spent many hours selecting the photos and arranging them to suit the progress of our tour. She also found the background music to enhance the video further. Further technical help, much appreciated, was provided by Heidi Herring and Alyssa Gillespie at the University of Prince Edward Island. <laughs>